Trucker Nene. What's going on with you? Oh, you know, I'm living the life out here. Living the life. That's that's living that's the life. that's what we all trying to do out here. We're trying to live the life. As a matter of fact, let's let's let's, let's play this living life video for you. In small bites, small moments, finding the joy in everyday things. I don't know, I used to chase rainbows. Now, <laughs> literally I'm chasing Jake, but now I'm she's, just chasing. She's chasing that, she's chasing that, she's chasing that bag. That's what she's chasing. She's chasing that <laughs> cheese, that cheddar, that that moolah in the in this trucking industry, y'all. I want you guys to put your hands together and welcome Trucker Nene to the show. Can I get a drop the bomb? Oh, you want a drop the bomb? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. She said she said she wants a drop the bomb. Special request, the bomb. Yes. There you go. Yes. Trucker Nene in this beach. What's going on with you, Miss Nene? Uh, you know, I got an important meat load that I got to get to Florida. That you... They're out of meat, I understand. So Ooh. I am hauling ass, literally. So where where are you right now? Like, where where are you in, in between where you supposed to be like you like on i-95 you on you on the turnpike i'm on 10 east oh you're on 10 10, okay yep all right so you came from texas i came from texas i did indeed okay 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 that's what's oh go ahead and i just want to say if you're in florida i'm coming your barbecues can continue now you can only have like two people at your barbecue right now but i'm coming that's what's up And she's coming from <laughs> Texas You see what I'm saying right? That's how we doing right. it That's how we doing it You know <laughs> Shout out to all of my Texas subscribers All my Texas viewers That's what's up You And you guys know With the current company Where I'm at I, I, I head down to Texas Just Just about every Week Just about every week Well Trucker Nene Introduce yourself to my listeners out here Let, let them know who you are well, what I'd like to say, you know, uh, it's probably a 10 second elevator speech, but you know, yeah, I, yeah. I left corporate for the highway and I'm, I'm doing trucking my way. You know, I had no previous mechanical experience. I just had a dream and I pursued it and I, uh, continue to get better every day and learn from others. And, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm living the life. Living the dream. So you says uh That's right. So you say you had a dream of being a truck driver. What what was your what was your career or what what was your uh job before you got into trucking? So uh I for the last thirty close to thirty five years I was corporate management. Mm -hmm. So I worked in like the HR um industry and I worked in um like the insurance industry. And then recently, but the most recent before I came in, I was in the architectural interior design manufacturing industry. Right. So uh, a, varied, a varied background within corporate management, touching different industries. But um, ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be, a, you know, a truck driver. And when I, you know, was pursuing colleges and things of that nature, you know, it wasn't really acceptable in my family for a woman to to be go a, into trucking so truck it was driver. business law or engineering so i chose business at that time and then i you know i was unhappy for the next i mean not solidly unhappy but you know um i was doing something for everybody else and not for me so i finally you know turned 47 three years ago and said that's it that's it i raised my kids i'm doing this i'm i'm going to school it's funny it's funny. What, how do you feel? How do you feel about some of these uh, old timers, such as myself? I'm I'm 50. I started trucking at 45. How how do you feel? How do you feel about these? Um, how do 
how should I say these late bloomers, us us late bloomers getting into trucking? What do you, how do you feel about well, that? Yeah, so I I too am fifty. I turned fifty in January, and okay. you know what? I hold think up, we I, up, yeah, I up. think we bring a whole new. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. Fifty. That's what I'm talking about. It's the big five to some degree, right? I think we bring a level of maturity that you know twenty somethings cannot bring. We bring you know our experience from our previous industries. No matter what that was, we've been through some stuff, right? Right. Right. And I think that matters in life. So um, there's you know there's a there's a voice for people that are switching their careers from what they were doing to trucking. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of emails because people see that I have done it. They're like, well, my gosh, she was 47. If she can do it, I can do it. That's how, that's you know, how I um, was. That's, that's exactly how yeah. I was. And, I, and, and what, and what inspired me was a 45 year old female trucker or 47, okay. 47 at the time. Because like I said, I was in the, uh, well, I'm still in it, but I was in the uh, roadside um, industry, and I went to do a lockout for for this uh, for for this young lady, and I seen the semi truck in the in the yard next door, and I'm thinking it's her father. It's like, yo, your father? Mm -hmm. I said, your father's a truck driver. She's like, no, that's my mom's. What? She was like, yeah, wow. she just start she just started driving. She's like 47, I think. 40 I think she was like mm -hmm. 47 or 45 or 47, I don't know. But she was in her 40s. And I'm over here looking at this like, man, wait a minute. If if she's if she's in her 40s and driving a truck, god damn it, man, I'm about to do it. I, you know, I'm about to That's do it. Right. I I separate, you know, me and my me and my uh wife separated. My son's grown. Let's, let's do it. So I went right around the corner to try to see. Pulled out that, uh, that uh, not American Express. Where the hell did I get American Express from? I pulled out that Capital <laughs> One. You know, everybody could, get, everybody could get a Capital One card. I'm just saying. Pulled, mm -hmm. out, pulled out that Capital One and just matched it out. I told the lady. She was like, are you sure before I run it through? I said, go ahead. I said, go ahead, because I'm not changing my mind. So, so yeah, for you, you exactly right about uh, that. We bring some type of continuity uh, to the industry mm -hmm. versus somebody that's much, much younger. Absolutely, and I'm not saying that the younger, you know, the younger people can't do it. I'm just saying I know that, like my. Fleet manager does not have to call and wake me up, does not have to call and make sure I'm going to be at my appointment, does not have, I mean, you know what I mean? Like he, he just depends on me. I've created a relationship of trust with him. So, and I don't know that everybody can do that. That's exactly. And I, I mentioned that a few times too. You know, you get, you get a good rapport with the fleet manager, then your time at that company is going to be beautiful. As long as you and that, mm -hmm. as long as you and that fleet manager is on the same page and y'all click, he knows he knows what you can do and and you know what he can do for you, as far as getting you loads, as far as as far as keeping you paid, as far as you know whatever. That's that's what it is. It's the fleet manager. Now, mm -hmm. once you lose that, then it probably might just go downhill from there. Kind of wish my fleet manager. Yeah. Kind of wish my fleet manager for my old company never left. But it is what it is, and I built a new relationship with where I'm at right now. But I think I, I think my relationship is kind of kind of strained, being that I was in a in a side swipe accident yesterday. I gotta 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 talk to my uh gotta talk to my safety director. Yeah, I saw that. that yeah. Year. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, gotta talk to my safety director. Never a fun moment. But, you know, like I said, I got the video. Uh, hopefully, the, hopefully the company, company dash cam video will confirm my video. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. So where, yeah. so where are you from, uh, actually, Trucker Nene? So I live in just like the outskirts of Minneapolis in Minnesota. Oh, that's, you, you know what? Minneapolis, Minneapolis. 
that is that's my that's my second home. The home of Prince, the purple one. That's right. The home the home I of Canterbury. By, <laughs> I go by uh, Prince's uh, Paisley you know, Park. Have you ever been Paisley in there? Park. A couple. I've never been inside, but I go by all the time because there's a a few companies that we uh, that we work with. So I'm over there quite a bit when I'm in that area for home time. So when you when you go past there, what can can you describe? Can you describe the scene? Is is it like is it like a lot of a, a, a lot of visitors there, or is it quiet? Or um, so I believe that they have a seasonal like seasonality with their museum being open. There's something like that. I, now I don't know if it's changed because you know he's been he's passed now right. um, quite a bit. So I don't know if they if they changed things up. But uh, from the outside, I mean, it's all you know has a security gate. It's very. Um, there's nothing posh about it. It looks like a big, ugly slab of cement Ooh. brick building. I mean, it really does. It, there's nothing. Nothing spectacular nothing cool about, about it. it. Yeah. But you step inside, and I understand that is where you see Prince's personality come to life. Because, you know, I mean, just think about the fashion that he wore. Right. Um, you know, and that's what he displays in his house. And um, I have never been inside, but I understand – if you can go, go because it's worth it. That's that's what I am trying to do. I'm I'm trying that. Well, at least that was the plan to go back up to um, Paisley Park and uh, and go visit there. But unfortunately, this uh, epidemic. Please don't say the name. This epidemic put the kibosh on everything. Yes. Uh, I mean, it put the kibosh. On life as we know it, and it's it is uh, it is crazy. It is crazy. So, well, uh, you know, I feel like people are resilient. So we just got to live a different life than we were mm-hmm. until we can get back to until we can get back to what we what we want. I mean, life hasn't stopped; it's just changed. Exactly. Exactly. I brought up. Uh, I brought up the the website to Paisley Park. Um, they did mention. I'm not going to say the name, but of course, uh, they 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 expressing the the situation that's going on right now. But it did. It is saying that Princess Paisley Park in Chat Chasmin. And am I pronouncing that right? Chat Chasmin. Chat Chan Chan Minnesota. Is yep. is now open for public tours. I, I'm not sure if this. Well, hold on. In light of new issue. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. It's it's not open. They they temporarily uh, closed, but they are. Yeah. But but once once everything comes back to normal. Once everything comes back to normal, you know, get a chance to get up there and and uh, and uh, hit Paisley Park. That's that's it's that's, that's something. right. I usually hit Min, uh when I hit Minnesota, I definitely do uh, I definitely do Mall of America and being that I'm a poker player mm-hmm. and I won my big hand at uh Canterbury Park over there, so you can catch me at the tables. Wow. With uh with a full bottle of thirty five dollar sanitizer. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, life. Like I said, life, life has changed. So, what was? Yeah. So, what was life for you up in Minnesota? Like, like how you you grew? You was born and raised there, or you just moved there? So I was born and raised in Wisconsin, um, okay. and then after my divorce, my kids were still in high school. So this is oh gosh, a long time ago. Uh, I don't even remember the year. Mm-hmm. But anyway, when I separated from my then husband, um, I was recruited for another position. So we moved to Minnesota at the height, well, at the start of my youngest son's high school career. So, you, you know, I won Greatest Mom of the Year Award for taking him away from all of his friends. You know, right. Um, son didn't yeah, like that. That was a tough that was a tough year, but it ended up being the best move possible for everybody concerned. So, um, so I've been in Minnesota. Actually, do you remember when the bridge fell down in Minnesota um, and it collapsed uh, and there was, there was those deaths and there was, 
it was like 2011. That is the day that I moved to Minnesota. I'll never forget the day I moved because it was filled with horrific scenes and calamity and oh, um, oh, oh. yeah, the Hold the on. bridge fell. I mean, it was rush hour. Thankfully, the bridge wasn't filled wow. like with a lot of traffic, but it fell, and it was it was awful. Oh my god! It and it, and it fell right into the into the water. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. did they say? It, did they say what was the reason of the collapse? It just deteriorated. Yeah, that's what sort of spurred on the whole examination of all the bridges across the country, um, and they were finding weak points in the, you know, the infrastructure, and that's why you find that um, states and cities are are very serious about their bridge repair. Wow. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at an article right so they, now. This is from August 1st, uh, 2017, and it says, who's to blame to mark the 10-year anniversary of the I-35 West Bridge collapse? They rewent, I mean, they re- 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 rewritten the story. So it was just a nor- yeah. it was just a normal day. Just a normal day. Just a normal day. People going like you know how it is now it was just a normal day people going you know minding their business going back and forth on the bridge and then mm-hmm. boom it just it just fell out from under them oh wow that's <sighs> yeah it was oh that was yeah it was 2007 now that i no it's i think back yeah yeah because they read they they just redid the thing and it says uh 2000, 2017, 10 years ago. Of course, it's uh, mm-hmm. uh, 2007. <sighs> that is, that is awful right there. That's, yeah. Whoa. How, how, how many, how, how many, how many passed on that? That, that I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, it just, the, you know, anytime there's something like that, that happens, the media gets involved right away. And, and sometimes I don't know that there's a lot of sensitivity because you're trying to bring, bring people what they want to know and hear and see. And some of those scenes are just, they were hard to see. Wow. But they were in the midst of that tragedy, so they broke the news, and not always the best news. So, so you say you? I'm not sure what the numbers were at the end. So you say you you was moving? So you was at? Was you actually in transit, or would you? You know, you was just I, you finally moved into into the place where you was. Uh, so I'm gonna share. I'm gonna I'm gonna share something very selfish with you at the time. So okay. I. You know, I'm driving the big truck. I have my kids with me and my movers and stuff like that. And I hear this come across the radio. And I know I don't know anything about um, the highways and the interstates that we're going through, you know, the Minneapolis metro area. So I didn't know if I was going to be impacted. So um, I called a friend of mine and I said, great, I understand they just shut down a bridge. I don't know, it collapsed or they blew it up. Or I was very um, just nonchalant about it more or less that it was going to be an inconvenience for me right because i didn't have all the details Mm -hmm. and um he proceeds to say no 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 like that it fell it fell down there were there were vehicles and and innocent people on it and i went what wow so it completely changed um you know what i initially thought you know like when road construction and they give you a detour that's Mm -hmm. sort of the the initial idea that i thought um, and he said, but it doesn't impact you. You're not, you wouldn't have to cross that bridge anyway. And then I was just, you know, the, the next week, week and a half, just inundated with everything I could find out about what happened. So you just, you, you just put, you, you just put 100 into finding out uh, what happened to that bridge now. Yeah. Yeah. But initially, you know, I was selfish and said, oh, great. You know, like it's, going to interrupt my moving day and then when i find out that innocent people were involved and it was 
a, you know, just a tragic situation, I felt like a shitty person, you know. You, just, said, you said you felt some kind of way. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so how, so they, so of course they, did they, re, well, of course they did. They, re, they, they rebuilt the bridge. How long, how long did it, yeah. how long did it take them to, uh, to rebuild and repair the bridge? God, it, it, you know, it seemed like forever. Um, cause I, I, I know I that, even tell you I know that disrupted a lot of commuters. <laughs> It did, yeah. Yeah, because that's right in the heart of, of sort of the Minneapolis area. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, the new one's been up for, for quite some time, but I, I couldn't tell you how long it took. I can't remember that. Okay, okay. I think, I, I think, I'm, I think I'm pulling up the I think I'm pulling up the new bridge as we speak. Uh, let me see if I can if I can pull up that new bridge, let's see. I know when, uh, you know, they have, it, like any bridge now, they have this these incredible lighting systems. So when Prince passed away, the whole bridge was lit up purple. Um, so I know it was up by that time. Yeah, hold on. I'm, I'm looking at it now. They actually did, uh, they actually did two, uh, let me see. Let me change that. Uh, huh. I cannot find it. It's right here. I wonder what's this under. You know what? I'll 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 do it this way, y'all. I'll I'll bring it up this way. Let me let me hit the display screen right quick. Yeah, so there it is right there. That's that's the uh I thirty five uh memorial bridge in blue and you said uh and you said they they lit it up in purple in honor of, in honor of prince so mm-hmm. so yeah that's well i should say the the whole city went purple when when prince passed away so i, I know man that's not surprising, I, I, but that specifically i mean that boy that that boy did that boy did a lot for uh for mm-hmm. the city of uh Minneapolis. He did a lot. He sure did. Um so how did you attain your license? Like did you did you go to a, a trucking school or did you go to a company? Uh how how did you uh how did you go by getting your license? Sure. So when I when I uh decided that I was going to pursue trucking, I immediately started researching and mm-hmm. and tried to find something close to home and something like that right and the more I researched as far like for me I found that the best situation was going to be prime for me okay okay so prime the time, yeah, there the it is my boyfriend there it is prime <laughs> you know now hey now listen listen all you prime uh watchers I did not bring it up did not bring it up even though I already knew where she worked at, I already knew where she worked at. I knew where she rocked out for. Yeah. But I, I just want to let yeah. y'all know, I didn't bring it up. All right? So Nope. Let's continue. <laughs> so, right. So, at the time, um, my husband now was my boyfriend at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said, I'm going to go to trucking school. And he's like, oh, okay, where? And I said, Missouri. And he's like, for how long? I said, I don't know. Um, you know, because... It all depends on how well you do and, and a number of other variables. Mm-hmm. So I left in October of 2017. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it was the best time to go because of Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Right, right. Um, it seemed like my training was extended because of the holidays, right? Because people were taking time, time off. My off trainer took off, to, that sort of thing. Right. The trainer had to go home, so you couldn't. You, right. you you couldn't you couldn't do nothing until could you did you request another trainer while the trainer was out uh for for the holidays or they just said you had to wait for the uh trainer to come back Yeah I I did, I went home um for the holidays and he went home so 
I didn't. I didn't request another trainer. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the tr- the training process. Well, first thing first, mm-hmm. you 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 went through Prime to obtain your license. So the schooling process. Can you can you take us through that? Take uh t- uh take your sure. experience through that. Sure. So, <laughs> um, if anybody's watched the beginning of my channel and sort of my a journey through trucking, you re- you will know that I did not have the best experience in training. Mm-hmm. Um, so before the state laws passed and all of that, I actually went to Missouri and I I got my permit through Prime. So I you know I studied and all of that. Went to the the Missouri DMV, got my permit, um, and then I started uh, what's called their PSD mm-hmm. um, classes, and that's to help you get your license. Right. So they really focus on like, you know, backing into, you know, the in between the lines, not hitting the cones. It's, it's not really, as we all know, reflective of what happens out in the real world when you're backing into a dock. Mm-hmm. But um, I had a really great trainer that um, during the PSD phase, it, just awesome. I cannot say enough about him. And I trifected, which in Prime's world means that um, you pass your your first attempt on all three. Okay. Um, yeah. I see, I've seen a few your YouTubers. And, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, I've nah. seen it through you YouTubers mentioned that they, they trifecta and I'm like, huh, what that means. So that's what that, yeah, that's what that means. And then when you try that, the, the, the uh, student gets a small bonus and then the instructor gets a bonus as well. Is the instructor, um, well, not the instructor, but is the trainer there with you while you, while you, um, while you uh, training out or testing out? Yeah. So in, in prime, uh, you have what's called an instructor and then what you have is called a trainer. So when you are getting, when you are leading up to getting your license, you are with an instructor. Mm -hmm. And then when you actually go out on the road to learn the job and to get your miles in, you're with a trainer. Okay. Okay. So So that's how they define the difference. Sometimes it's the same person. Mm -hmm. And so like myself, I'm an instructor and a trainer because I can do both. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, 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 um, yeah, so he's there, but he's not allowed to talk to you. He's not allowed to have any communication with you. Okay. And that is the same with, at least in Missouri, um, on their training pad, that's the same place where they bring the examiners in to test. And it, there's very strict protocol. Like there is no, even though you may be on one pad, really teaching a student, right. You cannot make any gestures because they do not know if you are trying to help the person that's testing or if you are helping your student, it's very strict. And I, I appreciate that. Okay. Um, but the the instructors are are they wait inside the building. They're not allowed to be be with you. Who was your trainer? Any 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 popular person I know, or was it? Uh... Well, he he doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he's very popular with Prime, and his name is Big Al or Alan Ross. Oh, okay, okay. Shout out to uh, yeah, Alan he, Ross. Shout out yeah, for being he, one of them uh, one of them good trainers. Yeah, good guy, good guy. Okay, so your so your experience would from from the school part all the way all the way to upgrading into your truck was uh was was a good one, so to say, or did it become rocky well, along the way? Uh, so after I received my license and went out on the road, um, I went through. I shouldn't say went through, but I had two different trainers the first one within that first week i was requesting a different trainer i hear you uh it it wasn't a good experience at all i hear you and and then the second trainer that i got uh was even worse but i i did not want to not complete i getting my cdl was important to me and come hell or high water i was going to get it even though he didn't believe in me said i couldn't do it said i couldn't manage a truck you know, told me not to go lease, said I'd be a failure. Wow. All of this. Wow. Right? Yeah, I know. Lot, what a great motivation. Yeah, a lot, lot, of, lot of negativity over here for this dude. Right? Man, what the hell? Yeah. A lot, lot, lot of negativity for this guy. Uh-uh. Yeah. yeah we, we, need so, to, uh, we, we need to kick him to the curve. 
Yeah. At one point, um, you know, my boyfriend at the time, mm-hmm. who's again, now my husband, mm-hmm. tried to call Prime to get me off his truck. He was so upset. And when I found that out, I, I said to him, I said, please, please just let me, let, let me just let you get try done. To get it, try to get it get done. done. Exactly. Yeah. I said, let me just, let me just finish this and I'll, I'll be on my own truck. I promise. Let me just finish. I got this. I can handle this. Okay. Whew, gosh, yeah. So you say trying times. So, I'm telling you. So ya. you say that uh, that that you know how how long? I mean, you know, I I I found this out from a from from a few interviewees, but how long was the training time uh, supposed to be? It's supposed to be like what fifty three fifty. Is it fifty? Well, when I went, it was it was thirty thousand miles. Okay. But now it's now it's fifty thousand. It can be sixty thousand. Um, it just all depends. Now, what's that translated in in time, like months? Well, well, that's that's the hard part. So it depends on when you come, right? Because the um, you know the freight can slow down in the winter, right? So you're not. I mean, literally, it's the it's not. It was, See, I was completely naive. So when I got on that truck, I looked at the odometer and went, okay, what's 30,000 miles mm-hmm. on that odometer? That's not the way it's done. It's 30,000 based on dispatch miles. Right. right? So your empty and um, loaded miles is what is counted towards your whatever whatever requirement you need to meet now. And I thought it was literally whatever whatever miles we were putting on that truck. And then when I called the fleet manager and said, okay, I, I should be almost done. He's like, no. And I was like, what do you mean? By my calculation, he goes, what are you using? And I said, well, the truck. I'm using, I'm using <laughs> the hub me. miles. Foolish me. <laughs> I'm, using, <laughs> right? I'm using the hub miles. That's what I'm using. What you oh, using? Gosh. Ram McNally home miles. Right. That's what you using? <laughs> no, like literally, literally I was looking at the odometer on the truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if the you know, and you're always going to do more miles than anything. You go out a route for, you know, washouts and fueling. And so right. I literally was just looking at the truck mileage and thought that was it. So I came, uh, but, um, I came across your other video, uh, that's dated back in 2018. And you was talking about, uh, transferring CDL to home state. Let's, uh, yeah. Hey, YouTube. All bit. right. It's the day before I leave, and one last thing I need to get done is transferring my Missouri CDL, which I had to get when I was at trekking school with Prime. I have to transfer it back to my home state in Minnesota. So I just arrived at the DMV. Um, I believe I have some exams to take, not the written test or or road test or backing, but um, some sort of written. All right, so let's talk about that. So, well, right now, they they make you get right now they make you get your home permit before you come to prime right correct but back yes. then you you got the permit and the license in Missouri and now that you had to transfer it back over to uh Minnesota what was the exams about i mean i i would have thought that hey here's my license i need to transfer it here thank you next in line yeah. what it was- what was that? It, it was it was strange. The the actual test that I had to take, you know, it's it's now com- computerized, but um, it was your basic um, test that you need to take when you're, you know, fifteen, sixteen, getting your regular license. It was that test. What? And I yeah, and I thought this is so strange. Why why am I taking? And they said it's just part of their requirements when you come in and transfer a license of any kind so now so now that that prime changed it over it's it's a hell of a lot easier now being that they got their permit in their own state they just get they get the certificate and then they just take that back to their home state and then get their license out of there right yeah and some some states are different like when i had a student on my truck he was from new york Mm -hmm. so we had to get to New York within seven days for him to transfer. Wow. For me, back in the day, it was we had thirty days. Wow, seven days. Yeah, so it really depends on the state. Wow. Okay. Okay. So you uh, yeah. so you mentioned that you you're now um, you now a trainer. Uh, 
You're a lease op as well. I, mm-hmm. All right. So how 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 those two intertwine with each other? So currently, um, I have my pit bull on the truck. So I I am not allowed to train. Um, because you can't have animals on the truck. It's, you know, it's just another distraction. And I totally agree with right. that. Um, but because of some things at home with, we're doing some remodeling and the dog doesn't necessarily like the workers. So mm-hmm. I've decided to take the, you know, my pit bull back on the truck with me. Okay. Um, but previously, um, you know, you're, you, people ask me all the time, should I go company or lease? I mean, that is probably the, the biggest the, question. Most yeah, I get. Yeah. yeah. And my, my answer is always the same. I'm not going to tell you either way. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because it, it really depends on who you are, your life, your goals, um, and your risk. I mean, I, I give them some questions to ask themselves. Mm-hmm. And then I say, you know, based on that, those really, those real scenarios, you can figure out which way you want to go. It's lease is not always the right answer, even though people see potentially bigger dollar signs initially. Mm -hmm. If you do not know what you're doing, you will fall on your face. Exactly. And that's a a good advice. Yeah. Like you just don't, don't follow the trend of being a lease up because you think it's the cool thing to do, or you think that's where you're going to make the most money. If you do not know what you're doing, don't do it. And that sounds like, well, how the hell did she know what she was doing back then, right? I felt, and I, I've said this, that I had 30 years of running businesses. Mm-hmm. I had that experience. What I needed to do was learn the trucking industry. Right. And I did. I mean, when I was in training, I read my trainer's uh, manual on his truck. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the type of person I am. I read the manual. I figured out where things were. Um, I paid attention to every shipper and receiver we went to. I figured out like, I, and, and that has just helped me as I got into my own truck. And now that, you know, Prime is testing a load choice board, right? So I've been, I've been doing that for, I think, six months. So Prime gives you, and with that, Prime gives you guys your, the opportunity to pick your own loads. Right. So there's, it's under testing mode, so I'm a part of the driver advisory board. So as as a board member, I'm automatically included in that testing. So it's intended for lease operators. So if you're company, you will never choose your own load. Um, but it's intended for lease operators that you'll have to meet some requirements when it actually goes into production, mm-hmm. like live. But um, yes, it's not a it's not a true load board. Um, you have up to six trips that you can choose okay you know or six trips to choose from okay i should say okay yeah but you got to know like you have to know the freight market for for prime and and like what's a good reload area and i mean or you can lose your shirt okay. i'm not i'm not kidding okay that's what's up it's uh yeah don't just go for it to be you know have that in your title as a lease op because it's no joke so before this before this opportunity arise for you guys you you guys pretty much had a had a dispatcher that was giving you uh dispatch loads and y'all would choose from from what they got or or did they just dispatch you yeah so when you're when you're a lease op um if you're not, even if you're not on this load choice today, if you're a lease up, then you work with your dispatch um, manager to give you a load. Now, they'll, they'll send what's called a proposed load. So you have an opportunity to accept that or, or uh, decline it. If you decline, they, they would like to know why. Because sometimes it's an educational piece, like you turned it down because I don't want you it. don't think you have enough hours. I, I don't want it. Right. Well, <laughs> but, they, but they'd like to know, is it, are you turning it down because of the rate? Are you turning it down because you had problems at that shipper before? Like, they want to kind of know, like, why are you turning it down? Right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, so they don't force dispatch um, when you're a lease op. So you, you know, you have an opportunity to 
to decide if you want that load or not. Oh, okay, okay. I was about to I was about to say there's a butt coming somewhere. <laughs> I was I was uh, ready. I was ready for that. I was <laughs> right when you said that there's no uh no uh force dispatch on lease drivers. I was about to say but <laughs> Well, the butt is if you well, it's not really a but. If I mean it's like a cause and effect, right? right? So if you don't take that load, you may fall to the bottom Ooh. and all those other trucks, you know, are then scheduled and then you pop back up. Like just, you know, you just because you turn down a load and your lease up doesn't mean immediately they're going to throw another one at you to you know, to see if you want to see if you want it. So you got you got to be careful, you know. That's what I'm talking about, like develop that trust with your Dispatcher, mm-hmm. that's, that goes a long way. I didn't refuse a load my entire first year oh, okay. because I thought, why would I turn down a load? I don't know anything. I've got to learn all, all, of, all this. of this. That's why you, that's why you took it. Yeah. Now, somebody like me, yep. somebody like me, depending on where they, where they send me or where the load's going. Yeah. I probably might've, might've turned that down and me and the fleet manager probably <laughs> well, would have had, would, would have had like a strained relationship. But they said there is a for you guys for you guys you know we're on the topic of uh talking of uh her experience as a lease driver uh for prime but there is a very big difference between company drivers and lease operators that you guys need to know that company drivers have no financial responsibility for the truck but they also don't have their they own dispatch prowess i should say you know you can't you know once you get a dispatch you got to run it boom bam boom but whereas the lease operators you know they carry all ref- uh, re- responsibility for the truck as far as fuel breakdown and so forth and so on so company drivers are mm-hmm. are are free to walk away from a carrier if things don't go well whether lease drivers, depending on what company you work for, you you might not be able to walk away, which beds the question, are you able to walk away from a lease at prime? So I am what I am in what's called a walk away lease, which means that so next February, you know, 2021, mm-hmm. my lease will be done. Mm-hmm. Right. So that'll be three years on my lease. Now, the type of lease that I have. I give that truck back. Oh, okay. Because I was about to, I was about to ask I don't you. Own that truck. I was about to ask you. Did would you own the truck after the three years? No, that's a lease purchase. So that's a different type of lease within time that um, that you can pursue. But I chose what's considered the traditional lease. Yes, I know. I rented my truck to get a better rate. I get it. I know. It. Are you still um, being that you being it, that you did it that way? Are you now? Are you responsible for the repairs on that truck? Being that you went that route with with the lease, or no? So, frankly, all of our equipment is so new that the bulk of things that go wrong are really covered under warranty. Okay. Right. Anything else, like you know, common maintenance type things, like. You know, I used to pay somebody to change my headlight bulb because I didn't know how to do it. I mean, I literally didn't do that in my own car. I didn't even check my own oil in my old car. I, or, you know, before I came out here, I would just take it to somebody. But now, you know, I put in my own headlight bulb so that I can save the money on labor, you know, going to a shop and the downtime. It's, I do whatever I can to keep me moving. Mm-hmm. That's just, I just like to hustle out here. I don't like to take time off when I'm out here. So... Minor repairs and stuff like that. Um, you know, I pay for my own oil changes. I pay for, like, I just had a coolant issue. Um, I had a leak. So in the tubing, it had a pinhole in it. So, you know, I paid for that. So, you know, it just depends on what it is. Okay. Okay. But at the end of the day, when you talk about a walk away, um, I could turn this truck back in tomorrow. Now, based on the, the, how my truck looks, I know for sure that I would be charged for replacing the driver's seat because it's cracked. I don't know how, but, you know, I have a seat cover on it, but it's still cracked underneath, right. so I would have to replace that. Right. Um, I just replaced all my tires, so, you know, another year, um, they'll probably give me some credit for the tires that are on here, but it's likely they're going to charge me for tires. Okay. So it's not like, 
it's not like you're not without responsibility to bring that truck back to a saleable vehicle, right? right. Like they need to either give it to somebody else to use, or they're going to try to sell it. And, you know, they, uh, they set aside money from your settlements every week to help you prepare for expenses and things like that. So before you receive any sort of lease completion bonus, which is all that money they took from you for over the course of your lease, mm-hmm. lease, they're going to get that vehicle repaired and deducted from you. Okay. Okay. So, you know, so I project that at, you know, by February, I will have somewhere, you know, 28, 29 grand in my lease completion bonus. Mm-hmm. And they may take five, six grand away from me for uh, repairs. And I'll walk away with, you know, 23, 24 grand in my pocket. Okay. Okay. For completing my book. Okay. That's yeah. For completing my lease, I should that's say. That's what's up. That is what's up. So, yeah. Uh, so, Next year, you you figure out what you. Next year, you also get another opportunity to 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 do another lease. Next year, um, I I could, but I've already made the decision based on where I'm at with my experience and what I want to pursue. That um, oh. I will be buying my own truck and leaving Prime most likely. Oh, okay, okay, at least. Pr- yeah, and it's nothing. I mean, Prime has treated me really good. It's nothing against Prime. It honestly isn't. Mm-hmm. It's just I want to do things out that time can't help me with. I got you. That's what's up. You know. So let's uh let's uh yeah. let's, before be, before we jump off uh jump off of Prime, let's jump on uh let's jump on uh YouTube truckers for a little bit. Um, Prime, do do I want to ask you? Do Prime yes. have the book of YouTube? Do when you guys go for orientation, when you when you went for orientation, didn't did they have a a, a another session to say, yeah, here's here's our YouTube uh uh schooling. Did did they have that? I'm looking for somebody no. to say yes. And and actually when when <laughs> when I came, you know, when I came in 2017, there was only one YouTuber that I watched that was currently at Prime. So I don't know, you know, I don't know how big it really was. Would that happened to be um, back that, then. And when I started mine, would, it was just for family and friends. Would that happened to be. And it just sort of took off. Would that happened to be Junior? Junior, uh, how do you pronounce his last name? Honduras? Honduras. Honduras, would that be. He was, yeah, he was the male, um, he was the male YouTuber that I watched. But at the time, there was also Tiffany Eccles. Okay. Um, she has since left Prime, but I watched her too. And then, like my first week there, I actually met her uh, in the terminal. So it was kind of cool. It was like I was like starstruck. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. It's sort of weird how that happens. But, okay. So I didn't find that there were a lot of Prime YouTubers back then. Today, Today you, I am overwhelmed. You can at type the number of YouTubers. You can type up. <laughs> you can type up. Hold on, right quick. I, I I typed up Prime Inc. <laughs> in the YouTube search yes. bar, and there is yes. uh trucking through life. Well, there's me and my podcast, but that's when I was talking about it. Uh, Busy Blake Q and A with uh with the with the one girl uh Nikki Yos uh No Hippie Trucking. My man, mm-hmm. my man, Crazy Bags. Uh. Anyway, moving on. Uh, moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> well, I don't know if you were saying that to get a response from me. Yeah, mo- I, yeah know, maybe, moving. Maybe the art of pause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving on. Moving on. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah we, we, we all know of the, we all know of the controversial situation that went on with uh with with that and we do not need to Mm -hmm. we do not need to beat a dead horse into the ground no more because it's it's been beaten it's been flip flopped and all that other stuff my question is this though i i was disappointed i I was disappointed that i came across your video and i think i did a i think i did a video saying don't leave or whatever I think I I think I did a video mm. on that. 
But I, I was disappointed okay. that, that you actually took your channel down. And I was like, no, nah, don't don't do that. I, I didn't want you to take your channel down because you 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 got some good information. It was just unfortunate that the people who we talked about that we talked about at the time, you know, it it it, it is what it was. My question now, being that I got right. you on the phone, my question to you was, mm -hmm. did Prime have something to do with you taking that one particular video down? Okay, so just to be clear, um, are you talking about the video that I made sort of as a reaction to the whole crazy bag yes. thing? Or are you talking about the video that I did where I said I was going to take my channel down? Uh. No, 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 no. Not that not, not the channel down. I, I'm kinda hoping that was your decision. But the whole crazy the yeah. whole crazy bad situation. Did did Prime have right. did Prime have anything to do with you uh taking taking that down? So when I when I um did mine, um I think I was probably one of the first. Right. And then uh the other prime YouTubers sort of follow suit. I think they took it to the next level. They used certain terms and they mm -hmm. said certain things in their titles mm -hmm. and then they spoke about it differently than I mm -hmm. did. Um, my understanding is that Prime reached out to them and either told them or requested that they take their video down. Now, ironically, while that was happening, I was also speaking to uh, the director of you know communications and stuff from Prime because I was getting... I was getting ready to go to the next board meeting. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about, am I arriving in hotel arrangements and all of that? She never asked me and she would be the person. She never asked me to take my video down. Okay. So after, after I saw that everyone else was taking their video down, you know, there's a point of reflection where, where you're like, do you, do you really want that to be part of your channel? Right. Like, do you want people to be following you? And then all of a sudden they're like, what kind of video is right. this? Right. Right. You know what I mean? So sometimes I go back and I will remove things that at the time were very suitable and fitting. Mm -hmm. But if you aren't in the current time, like, and everybody else has removed stuff, you're like, what? I don't even understand what this is all about. So I will often do that. I'll go back and take something down that I don't want to have a heavy presence on my channel because it doesn't ultimately have anything to do with me in the end. So I made my own decision to take it down because I didn't want it to be a reflection on me when these other adults made the decisions that they did mm -hmm. um i just didn't want it to be a part of my channel well you know i you know when when um me and my uh former co-host uh when we did uh a reaction to the crazy bad situation uh you know i i got a little bit of blowback uh, i had a few youtubers uh you know I, I had one YouTuber that did a, a reaction video, but he took it down. And I was kind of like, okay, you know, why? But, I, you know, I had another YouTuber uh, that emailed me and said, you know, said they peace about it too. But, I mean, it is, it is what it was. Once again, it is what it was. I like that word. That's why I'm using right. it. Um, that everybody was was talking about the situation and it was a topic of discussion because you know you 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 got a popular trainer over there and and a female trainee and they was messing around and he lost his money you know he lost his money from a, from the whole situation you know and that was the reason why you know that was the reason why we talked about it it was you know it was it right. was a uh, it was a topic of discussion, but when I went back and I started noticing that these YouTubers was taking down the the videos that was talking about it, I was like, I was like, whoa! Because I didn't, to be honest with you, I didn't find out nothing about it until uh, the one the the one young lady uh, mentioned it in her video. She said, you know, goodbye, crazy bads. Uh, have you know goodbye crazy bass or whatever and then when i checked when i mm -hmm. checked into that i was like whoa okay and then i then i went back to her and checked in on it again it's gone and i was like right 
And I was like, wow, that's crazy. So right. trucker. So ironically. Oh, go ahead. No, oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was, I was, I was going to say, ironically, you know, uh, he does, he did a video. I, I don't know if it's still up because, you know, we'll, we'll take things down as they, whatever, but he did a video talking about what um, happened. Yeah. Kind of like they went to Pittston and blah, blah, blah. Well, apparently while they were in Pittston, I mean like real time, they were in Pittston going through all of this, you know, primes firing them, that sort of thing, or letting them go, whatever you want to say. I also load a video that says students don't date your right. trainer. Right. So, so I, like people were coming to me behind the scenes, emailing, texting, like, how did you know what was going on? And I'm like, <laughs> okay. So, you know what I mean? Like it, it, there's a lot of people that think that I knew what was going on at the time. Um, and they think that I have this, all this knowledge about stuff that happens behind the scenes with prime. That, it, that's just the theory of, I like to call them primates, you mm -hmm. know, and my fellow, my fellow prime colleagues were primates. So, um, but I did not know that they were in Pittston at that time that I put that video up, but I was aware of several situations, both in prime and outside prime with other who shared with me that they dated their students and it, it went wrong. And then, you know, so my plea was really like students, get your, get your CDL and then do your thing with them, you know, but concentrate and focus on business. So then when I put up my video um, after, after the news broke that, you know, he was let go, that sort of thing, I got a lot of backlash mm -hmm. too. And I think mostly it was because, you know, he had built a rapport with his subscribers mm -hmm. and they were coming to his defense. Right. And, and that's how, you know, that's it's, it's unfortunate. That's, that's it's, it's unfortunate that all of us, including myself, you know, we, we do have we do have some fans. You know, we, we do got some we got some fans, right. we got some loyalists. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. You know, and a lot of them a, a lot of them will come to the defense of their favorite YouTube uh YouTuber, whether it's a trucker or any right. YouTuber for that matter. But at the end of the day, he made certain decisions and he broke company policy mm -hmm. and um, that's, that, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's what happened. Don't blame me for his decisions and his actions. Do you know what I mean? I simply talked about the facts. You know, I said in my video, I make no judgment. Here's, but here's what happened. Mm -hmm. It's a trainer who dated a student against company policy and he got fired that's so it. there is a so there is a company policy in place for trainers not to fornicate with their train with their female counterparts yeah i mean even when you come to, to training school as a student they tell you do not do not get hooked up with another student Okay. You will be sent home. Oh. They do not play that game. Ooh. Yeah, they do not play that game. Let's hear it for that. And I respect that. Let's hear it for that one right there. They don't need that. It's about coming in, getting your money, and getting getting the knowledge. And then every everything right. else should be secondary. Like, really. Right. Everything else should be secondary, you know? First the first dairy should be coming in learning how to learning how to move this 18 wheeler across the states you know mm -hmm. then after you get all that i you know i'm i'm a firm believer that don't date your you know don't date your trainer your trainer trainees and also i i don't want to just want to bring this out here but don't don't date under other youtubers either that's yeah anyway anyway um uh, <laughs> um but yeah, just just come out here, and uh, come out here and 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 get your money, trucker Nene. Yeah, there's plenty of time for all that other stuff. I mean, come on. Where you left your life to get a CDL? Take it. Yeah, seriously. plus you paid all that money for it too. You know, I paid fifty. I paid fifty G's. You know, and what to come to, oh. to come out here 
I mean, not 50 G's. I'm sorry. Five G's. Not 50. Okay. I, I'm not. I don't have that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I probably should be an owner operator if I'm paying that kind of money for my CDLs. But no, I right? paid I yeah. paid five G's for it, and um, and I don't have time to I don't have time to lose it. Say you know, just like I gotta go, I gotta exactly. go and talk to my safety director on Tuesday. You know, I I, I don't have time to mess up my CDLs. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's my that's my CDL is not only my license but it's also my resume you know your 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 psp is on there your mvr is on there Mm -hmm. your uh your dac is on there everything is connected to your cdl so that's your that is your resume you don't need you know how they say you fill out a resume all you got to do is give them your cdl give them your driver's license number Mm -hmm. and poof every place you work for all your all your history within the last three years or two years, let me see, yeah, two, three years or whatever, poof, it will all come up. Everything that, everything the past company said about you, poof, it'll all come up. Hopefully the past company don't say nothing bad about you, but, you know. So Trucker Nene, you Mm -hmm. you say you started your, you say you started your, uh, your, your YouTube page way back in the day. Um, where did the is is Nene's your name or that's your or where did trucker Nene come from? Yeah, so my my government or given name is Nancy. Oh, okay. And when I was at Prime, um, they have a sim lab, so you spend a certain amount of hours um, in the simulator lab because you have to pass the mm-hmm. test. And they would do roll calls when you were coming in for class, and you know each each student writes their own name in on the roll call, and then they they run through the names. Well, the instructor misread my name and he couldn't read my penmanship. And he's like, is this, is this Nene? And by this time you spend so much time with other students that you kind of get to know them. It kind of becomes like a big family. And they're like looking around, everybody's looking around each other. And I finally said, do you mean Nancy? And he goes, well, yeah, I guess it, well, yes, I think it is Nancy then. And then everybody's like, oh my gosh, check her Nene. You got to keep that. Okay. So I became Chakranene from from Prime. So from my you know when I when I found out when I found out about you without even looking at you, I thought you was black. <laughs> <laughs> I was I what? was like because, of the, because of the name because of the name because you know a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of females you know a lot of black females have you know Nene and you know Shay Shay and all like that and. Without without oh, seeing okay, without okay. seeing the name, without seeing without seeing the picture or nothing like that, I thought you was black until I actually clicked on and I was like, oh, trick a nay nay. But I see, <laughs> but I I see you're 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 married to uh to to a nice gentleman. How how how? Yes, he's Jamaican. He's Jamaican man. Okay, how's that? Yeah. So I, I'm I'm sure that food over there is good, right? Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. <laughs> I can't even tell you. It's so good. I So he he's been in the states for 20 some years, like a citizen for I 24 years I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um but all of, all of his family still lives um in Jamaica. Wow. How how did yeah, y'all so we still go over there? How did y'all how did y'all meet? We actually met on a river cruise in Minneapolis. It was a reggae cruise. And my friends dragged me to it because, you know, they were, they were just like, it's the summer night. And they're like, just come with us. Just come to the, you know, reggae cruise. I'm like, I don't know. Okay. I did. We met. And we have been together ever since. So is is this him uh, right here in your thumbtack going to the gala yet needs some help to feel? Uh, yeah. So that's him right there? Nice guy. Is yeah. Is that him? He works for Prime, too? No, oh, okay. um, no, he owns an auto body repair shop in Minneapolis, oh, okay. but when we've been to a number of like get togethers at prime, mm-hmm. so we always go to the company store and support, support prime, you know, by buying their merchandise. So oh, okay. Okay. He likes prime. He likes to wear primes, uh, merchandise because I drive for prime. So he, that's, that, that that's what's up. You, you know, if you got that, if you got that support system, 
the significant other, you know, that's that's what's up. That's that is what's up, man. Uh, yeah. Well, Chuck and Nene, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's been a pleasure, man. I, I enjoyed my uh, my time with you. I, you know, I wish we had some more time together to uh, to go over a lot more things. But um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure of your situ- your driving situation right now. You are are you uh, are you still driving? What's what's your what's what's your twenty? Yeah, I'm I'm still driving. Um, you know, I'm on a I'm on an urgent load, so I, I got to get this meat there. Mm-hmm. So there's no stopping. Do, are you are being that this is like an urgent load, or is the hours of service you still got to go buy it, or they they freed it up for you, or what's what's the situation with the hours of service during this epidemic? Yes. Yeah, so Prime sent out a uh, a message to the drivers, and I I don't have it you know in front of me, but. Essentially, they're saying that, um, you know, we we need to abide by the hours of service when and where we right. can. But they understand that there's going to be some loads where you need to run and get the, the you know, the product there. And they said, you know, stay on your uh, stay on your logs. You will go into violation. Put a note in your logs um, and they will back us up in, in case anything happens okay. from, you know, like a DOT perspective or something that like is that. What's up. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can, you can take advantage of it because you, you know, just for say, like if you're a flat better running pipe up to somewhere that. Yeah. It's only full. It's like, honestly, yeah, you, yeah. you, you so take you, advantage of that. You still have to be mindful mm-hmm. of the hours of service. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cause I, I, you know, if you, uh, if you don't play along with their rules, oh, that they don't play. Put, I'm telling put, you, they, they, they'll put the kibosh on you real quick. They will do that. Right. They they, they will you, put the kibosh but, on but, you. Yeah, yeah. So I I appreciate that because they're not a pushover. I can tell you that. I hear you. <laughs> All right, trucker Nene. Before you before you get up out of here, this little session right quick is just some quick questions just yeah. to get to know you before you get on up out of here. So let me go ahead and start with sleep hot or cold? Cold. Cold. Man, you 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 uh you you you, you like sleeping with that AC on even in the winter time? Well, I gotta have a fan going. I, I'm weird. I gotta have my feet out <laughs> out the bottom of the sheets and the cover. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cash, <laughs> cash or card? Ooh, a card. That's what's up. That's what's up. Especially with this epidemic going on, you might right. might want to hold back on the cash. Ice cream cone or waffle? Ooh, ice cream. Ice cream cone. cone. McDonald's or Burger King? Oh, uh, neither. I don't do fast food. Oh man! Okay, I can't. I can't. I, can't. Uh, I, I can't. Hey, uh. I I hear you. I hear you. So <laughs> what? So do you do you cook on your truck or do you just you you do uh like uh uh healthy foods like salads and stuff like that? Yeah, I make sure I have at least one salad a day. I'm a big hard-boiled eggs fan. I do tuna. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'd like to say that I eat healthy all the time, but Lord knows, you know, I'm out here too along with all the other truckers. So, you know, I'll get into my – popcorn is my downfall. Okay. Popcorn. As healthy as that can be, not the way I, I have it. I got, not, you, I got but, you. I got you. What's your What's your knowledge yeah. on uh, What's your knowledge on R and B? You 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 hip to some R and B artists? Oh, hit me! Hit me with All it! Right. Hit me with Mary, it! Let's go. Mary yep. J. Blige or Faith? Mary J. Mary, Mary J. J. All day, hey, huh? If you say Mary J. Mary J. All the way, all, all day, 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 huh? Huh? What about uh, What about Lizzo or Cardi B? Ooh, I gotta go with Lizzo. <laughs> even though, even though she's, <laughs> even though she's doing the damn thing, she's doing too much. But you know, if if you take time to listen to her sing, yeah, that's that's what's up. Prince, mm-hmm. Prince, or Michael Prince, uh, Prince, <laughs> Prince. <laughs> you said you you said no. You say you don't have to go no more with that. <laughs> nope. You said, nope. 
<laughs> oh man, what about some uh, what about some old school joints? What about uh, Luther Vandross or Teddy Pendergrass? Ooh, oh gosh, I'm gonna. I mean, oh, my heart's gonna have to go with Teddy. I mean, I. I got some moments back in time with Teddy. Uh, you say you, you say you got you got you got what I need. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you what do you say? Soda pop or you say soda or pop or soda pop? Um, I I actually I say it together. I say soda pop because that that fits everybody. But I don't drink okay. soda pop. Yeah, I don't mess with soda either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So I got I got three. Netflix, Hulu. Or Disney Plus? Netflix. Now, see, I was going to say Prime, like <laughs> Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime. I was going to say that, <laughs> but I didn't want to, I didn't want to muddy the waters with Prime, be, with all the Prime talk right, that we did. Right. So, but yeah, Netflix, That's Netflix right. is my shit. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah. my family member got me hip to uh, Disney Plus, so I'm 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 rocking with I'm rocking with the Mandalorian right now. So went back went back into nice. went back into the '90s and watched the uh, old X Men cartoon. And whatever you guys do, do not fuck with X Men season five. I do not know what the hell happened. Whoever decided to do season five that way needs to be shot. They need to be <laughs> shot. Okay. I don't know what happened, but they, they need to be. All right. Well, Trucker Nene, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. I really do. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, 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 say you, you, you say you prefer. You say you prefer the bomb drop. There you go. Yeah. You say you prefer that. There you go. You prefer the bomb drop. <laughs> All right. So, everybody. You know, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that more button for more content like this. Not content like that, but content like this. Hit that subscribe button for a brother. You know what I'm saying? It's And, and the likes are free. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, the likes is free. If you guys want to get at me, y'all want to mm -hmm. y'all want to come on the podcast, chop it up with me and all like that. Y'all y'all could go into the playlist and see everybody that I talk to. You know what I'm saying? If you guys want to come on and holler at your boy, yo, get at me in the Gmail at pi, uh, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail .com. and you can hit me over in the DM over at Instagram. Speaking of which. Before we get up out of here, what's your what's your Instagram page? Mine is Trucker, Trucker Nene. Nene, everybody. So just mm -hmm. uh, type in Trucker Nene, and you can bring up on her, come up on her Insta Instagram, and you can follow her over there. With that said, with That's that right. said, let me give another bomb drop for Ms. Nene for coming on to the show. I really do appreciate you coming on, and and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, talking, sharing your experience with me and everything, I really do appreciate it. Um, don't You're don't welcome. be a stranger. You're always available to give me a holler if you want to talk to me, not like that. On 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 or off, you know what I'm saying? Is I'm I'm here I'm here sure. for you. So everybody else on, All right. Thank you. you're very welcome. Everybody else on that note, we are gone. All right. Thank you, Miss Nene. You're welcome. All right. You take it easy and be safe out there. All right. You too. Stay healthy. All right now. Bye. -bye.